how to legally 5X your database. Yes, you heard that right. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you a strategy from a friend of mine named Ali Aliaberry, who managed to market to, on a monthly basis, 28,000 homeowners while he only has a database of 4,000 clients of his own. Yes, I realize that's actually seven times the database, but that number sounds so ridiculous that I thought I would pick a more realistic number like 5X. I know the whole thing sounds absolutely crazy, but trust me, you're going to want to check this out because especially in the current market, and how it's become so much more competitive. If you can expand your reach, you can actually grow even as everyone else is shrinking. Before I jump into this, I wanna, I'm Scott Packford. This is the Out of Mortgage Brokering Podcast. Every week I create a short tactical episode where I share with you some strategies or something you can apply immediately into your business to improve it. And today is no exception. I'm gonna give you three things you need to do. If you wanna be able to do this, there's three steps you need to do. And I'm also gonna share with you how you can get way more info on uh, executing this at a high level as well. Uh, before we jump into that, we'll give a shout out to our title sponsor, Finmo. Finmo is a Canadian mortgage application, document collection, submission platform designed specifically for Canadian borrowers. It's very easy for borrowers to use. It's got cool features like smart docs. It knows what your client needs based on the app. And they're always upgrading this stuff, by the way. It's also got smart submission notes, pulls key data from the app, send to your lender, and it's connected to Lender Spotlight, which is the best tool for searching rates and guidelines. Check modelendescom slash Finmo. Just get a demo. The best thing to do is get a tour of it, sort of like taking a test drive and check it out for yourself. All right. So if you are an experienced broker with a reasonable size database, you are going to want to pay co close attention to this and you're going to want to copy it. Trust me, this is this is good stuff. So before I jump into it, though, and give you the three steps, I wanted to tell you a quick story with my friend Wally. So Wally, back before, remember in 2021, 2022, the market was crazy. We had lots of real estate transactions going on. And most people were focusing almost exclusively on on either refis because the market when the rates were going down and then also real estate agents. And Wally looked at his business and realized, oh my gosh, only 2% of his business was coming from his past clients. And so he decided, very. this was actually perfect timing, but he decided he was actually gonna change that and, dis and created a client concierge system. And in the next year, he went from 2% to 37% of his, his past clients. Now, the average mortgage broker in Canada may be like, well, hey, that's you know pretty normal, but you gotta keep in mind in the, in the US anyway, from the all the people that I've talked to, Focusing on your database is not something a lot of people do because you think about this, a lot of their mortgages are 15 years, 20, 30 year terms. And it's sort of like I get the mortgage and only if rates go down, will I even bother? And they focus on always getting the next deal. Right. And so in Canada, though, because we have shorter terms, typically, you know, three to five years, there's more opportunity for past client business. Either way, so if somebody who's in a market that historically is, so I think it's actually even more impressive because in a market where historically most people don't do this, he actually made an intentional effort and his business went up. You know, and, and his business over the last three years went from like 200 million to 300 million, while most brokers in the US, the volume all went down. Everybody is is basically battening the hatches, except his went up. So what did he do different? And I always, I, there's this great book called uh, Switch, How to Change When Things Are Hard by Chip and Dan Heath. And they talk about, when you have a big problem you're trying to solve, and instead of trying to solve the problem, just look for the bright spots. Who are Who's actually doing the opposite and go, okay, and then ask yourself, what are they doing that I could do? And in this case, I believe you could absolutely copy what Wally's doing. And so how do you do it? I'm going to give you the three steps. So first, the number one, the first thing you got to do is you actually got to build your own system to market to your own list. If you're not doing that, and that's why I say this is a fantastic strategy for people who already have a database in place. You know, I, I did a podcast last week about focusing on a niche. If you're brand new, the niche is the way to go because you can just narrowly focus. If you have a database, however, you've got a, you got another opportunity. So you got to build your own system. And so there's no point, no point in adding. If you've got 300 past clients, there's no point in going to 1500 if you don't even have a plan for what to do with the 300 that you got. So a couple of things that he does that I think are fantastic and that some other smart people do. One is he uses a tool called homebot.ai and it's basically a monthly digest of your home equity. It gives you a bunch of options. And what people like about it is it's about me. This is the reason people, the reason people like these surveys that are like, which, what's your spirit animal, which, you know, what's your whatever. We, we always want to know about ourselves. So the most interesting thing that you can send me is something about me. And if I'm getting something on a monthly basis, these reports from homebot.ai, where it basically shows me a breakdown of my home equity, shows me how much I've paid down, all these other, it gives me options if I want to buy an investment property, different things. It's all laid out for me and it works like crazy. And so there is a company that we're piloting right now called OwnWell. And if you're interested in that, you can shoot me an email, but they basically, they're the same thing for Canadian uh, mortgage brokers. And I think that this is going to be a tool that 
brokers are going to eat up because it essentially allows you to be, you know how people monitor their stock prices. Okay, what does my stock price do? My Apple stock, whatever. It's the same idea, but for your home. Well, we are on the, on as mortgage brokers and, and real estate agents, that is something that we want to help them pay attention to. And I want to be forefront and front and center on that. So own well. And then the thing is, is that, so the other thing with the client concierge, that's one of the things he does. The other thing is he has got five, these five touch points that he, that he does. You know, there's a seven day call, a 30 day call, a six month call, an annual call and a mortgage efficiency checkup that they're doing with these clients. And what and on those calls, they're not always looking for mortgage clients. So often you mortgage brokers are like, hey, why am I going to call them? I'm not going to get any business. He's not thinking that way. He's like, if I call these people and even if they don't need a mortgage from me today, I'm going to generate referrals from my key referral partners because when I generate referrals from them, I get, guess what? Ding, ding, ding. I get keys to their database. I now have, if I, if I send my financial planner six or seven referrals, and if I do this properly, I they're going to, not only are they going to feel obligated, they're going to send you business. Um, and so the idea is that you use your own database to generate referrals, yes, for you, but also for your key referral partners. And too many people are only thinking about themselves. They're reaching to their database because, hey, do you want to refi? Do you want to renewal? But they're not even thinking about the fact that their database is actually a massive opportunity to generate referrals that you can then give out to then get referrals back and databases back. You see how this is working? I mean, it's when he first broke this down for me and I saw what he's doing, I was like, this is so dang simple, but nobody, practically nobody's doing it. And the reason I can say practically nobody's doing it because everyone else, their production is going down and his is going up in a market that is incredibly crazy. And so when somebody's doing that back to the bright spots, you gotta be like, okay, I should probably pay attention or copy this, even if I'm slow. So he does these monthly touch points. Uh, you know, this, this, as I talked about, he does the calls. And then when I asked him about this, this email that they're sending out, that's again, because remember, it's focused on their and their home equity. So he's sending out 28,000 emails to to homeowners a month, 81% open rate, 67% click rate. Good luck getting that on anything else. Like that, it is absolutely insane to me that you're, because again, it's, it's about me. And also that's part of it, but it's also in the conversation, the setup on the 30 day call on how they, promote this thing and, and get the client excited about it so they actually want to pay attention to it. Because too often, again, we we set these things up, but we actually don't set the right uh, context for it. And people go, oh, who cares? But the way they set this thing up on that 30-day call makes people go, oh, I really want to pay attention to this. And so uh, and if you're interested, you can reach out to me with this uh, own well pilot thing we're doing. All right. So the first step is you must build a system to generate your own. So create a client concierge system, or whatever you want. You can call it whatever you want, but you need to have something beyond because, and don't forget, you're not just trying to generate referrals for you. You're trying to generate them for your referral partners. The second thing you need to do, which I see people skip, is you need to track them. If you don't track your own outbound referrals, and most of us, we, if you know, mortgage brokers are notoriously bad for this. My realtor friends are even worse. Sorry for realtor friends. We just, it's just, you don't usually sit in front of a machine to actually write this stuff down. But it's actually shocking to me how bad mortgage brokers are at tracking this sort of stuff. So if you're okay, if you're, most mortgage brokers have enough sense to track inbound leads. But what you need to do, and this is what Wally did, is he focused almost exclusively, his team, he, he generates the inbound leads because he's focusing on outbound referrals. And so, and there's this whole concept, what gets measured gets improved. Even if you do nothing but start tracking it, you'll start doing, you'll actually start generating more referrals, right? How many months, how many did you generate this week, this month? And so uh, one of our agents is uh, getting some training um, through, through Wally's Academy, and he has already started this in a month ago. He generated 22 referrals already, outbound referrals for his referral partners in a month. And so you start generating enough outbound referrals, you will get, and if you have the right kind of business conversations, you will get business back in return. So that, that's the other thing you need to do. Uh, and so the, that, so, and okay, so Scott, this is great. You send it referrals. How do I get business back? So I'll give you a little mini script that you can use. So, or, or uh, extra touch points. So let's say you send a referral to your financial planner, Sally, and Sally sells life insurance, or she sells life insurance. And so most of us send her the referral and that's it. And we go, okay, I send a referral. I did it. They're going to send business back. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. But there's an extra step you can add in here, which is, Hey, Sally, I'm just reaching out. Have you had a chance to talk to client X yet? Oh, you haven't. How can I help? I actually got to show them that I care that they actually close these referrals because uh, as Wally says, there's no traffic jams in the extra mile. You go the extra mile, you're going to get business. So like, oh my gosh, not only, so not only did I get the first touch point, which is the referral, I get the second and subsequent touch points because I'm actually following up on that. So then the financial advisor is like, oh shoot, this person's really working to help me with my business. 
right? And so what you need to do is you, you need to track it, but then you need to add in these little extra elements that improve it. So that would be the second thing. And then the third thing you need to do is you must, must, must have a business conversation with referral partners. It can't just be, oh, we like each other and I send them referrals and they're going to send them referrals. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe they will, but uh, likely if any of you guys have been doing this for any amount of time, you probably had these relationships in the past and you thought that they were going to turn out to be great and they were sort of meh or mediocre. And it's because you didn't actually have a proper business conversation with them and you need to set the right, again, context. I don't know why that's, that's my keyword for the day. My, this my episode is brought to you by context. So you have to have a contact, you have to have a conversation with them. So, uh, you, and I'll give you a script that I learned from Wally, which I think is fantastic. And so imagine if you're talking to your financial planner and you say to, you say to a financial planner, Hey, you know, her name, let's say her name is Betty. Hey, Betty, uh, I'm just curious. Who's your number one referral source? How many referrals did they send you last year? And, and say Betty says, Oh, I got, you know, Tom. Okay, great. How many referrals did Tom send you? Um, 10. Cool. And, and just, just so I can help me understand what's the value of each of those referrals? Like how much do you earn per referral? Oh, it's $3,000. Okay. So you're telling me that Betty helped you earn an additional $30,000 a year. And Betty's like, Why are you asking all these questions? And you say to her, Hey, look, listen, Betty, the reason I'm asking this is because I actually want to be your number one referral partner so that we can do a lot of business together. So that's just one of the conversations. And then you get into, there's a whole bunch of other scripting that you're going to want to do around this, but then you get into actually going, Oh yeah. Okay. So now I'm, I'm thinking about Scott, the mortgage broker and Scott's goal is to help me make an extra 40 or $50,000 a year. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to be way more open to working with Scott. I'm going to refer Scott more business. And you can be like, Scott, I don't believe you. I can just tell you it works because while he's doing it and his business is growing in when everyone else is going down. And so, um, you know, and then if, if you help them generate X number of referrals, so let's say at the end of the month, you sent them four referrals and you reach out to them and have a conversation, it becomes much easier because now you've dollarized the value of those referrals. Hey, so we sent you four referrals this month. Looks like you closed three. You know, how, like, and I, I've noticed I haven't seen any referrals back from you. Is there something that I'm doing wrong? So that's an easy way to start that conversation to be on there like, oh, shoot. Yeah, you did send me $9,000 of business this last month. Okay, you know what? Here's my database. Why don't we market to this together? Oh, here's some clients. Let me look at the people I've talked to recently. All of a sudden, now the business starts coming back in. And so the whole idea here, guys, this is there's nothing really super uh, high tech about this. It's just most of us skip a, we don't finish the thing we, we we start it we go oh i got a database i got a market to them but we then we don't actually create a system to generate referrals for anybody but ourselves so we're only thinking about ourselves then if we decide that we're going to generate referrals we don't track them so then we have no idea how effective it is and we don't make sure that we follow up and then if we and then if we, the next step is we actually don't have a business conversation we just assume oh if people like me they're going to send me business i'll give you a, i'll tell you something i've been reading recently this book called gap selling and I absolutely, I believe this is true. You being likable, that's fantastic. It's great. You will do business with people you don't like if they're actually really good at their job. You, it, so I'm not saying that be, be an asshole, but it doesn't, it actually doesn't matter as much as you think it does. And the problem is most mortgage brokers think, Oh, well, this be friends. Cool. I want to be friends too, but I also want to be, I want to be a partner and I want to do business together. And that only comes by having a business conversation. So quick recap. Uh, one. You build a system to generate referrals from your own database, and those referrals are for you and for your partners. Step two, track those referrals. Make sure you follow up so you get those touch points. And three, make sure you have a proper business conversation with your partners, and you're doing that on a consistent basis to generate the referrals from them. If you do that, you're going to blow up your database, just like Wally did, and and you'll be able to you'll have so you'll have so many more you know, fishing lines in the water that even in a down market or if realtors are down, doesn't matter because your financial planners are sending you business or your accountants are sending you business. And so this is, you know, one of the things that I see the weakness in, in most mortgage brokers business is they have these one or two primary sources of referrals. And when they, when the market shifts, they're kind of screwed. And so you, to build a strong business, I would wrap this around it. And back to, so I talked last week about building a niche. The great part of building a niche is you can still do this. You can create a niche and still be a fantastic referral partner who will generate inbound business for yourself. But these, these are not either or. These are both, you apply these things together and your business will even be stronger. If you found this useful, I'm actually doing a webinar with Wally on uh, next week. You can just click on the show notes. There's a link to, to get registered. He's going to break down for you more, way more in detail about what I just talked about. But honestly, you're going to want to check that out because you you should be using your database to grow and get other people's databases. Have a listen. Thanks for listening. I'm Scott Packford. And as I always say, there's no problem that you can't that 
can't be solved is in your mortgage business. Your problem is who's got the answer. Hope you find this useful. I will see you on the next episode.